Hey guys, it's Darian. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I plan on talking about my college experience, engineering, and possibly fashion and art. This is my first ever YouTube video, so you're probably new here. Uh, welcome. Uh, I apologize if the video is bad. It's probably going to be bad. This is kind of weird for me to talk to myself to a camera while well, I'm actually just using my phone, so there's no high tech materials. I'm also stocked up on like books. Oh, it's a mess. Anyways. Uh, I hope this video is useful to the people, anybody applying to school. Maybe you're already in college and you're just bored. I know I watch videos of people uh, giving me college advice tips when I'm literally in college. I don't know why I do that. Anyways, uh, let's just get straight into the video. Quick disclosure, anything that I say will not guarantee your acceptance into these universities. Uh, these are really just my statistics, that's all it is. The application process is very interesting and weird. It's probably going to be even more weird given how quarantine and COVID-19 has like impacted a lot of stuff. So just take everything with a grain of salt. Um, but I know that I watch these videos all the time and I was applying to college. Uh, so yeah, I get it. Anyways, two years ago, I applied to nine schools. Is this nine? Uh, one, two, three, four, seven. I applied to eight schools, just kidding. Um, I applied to Cal Poly Slow, UCSD, UCLA, Cal, uh, UCI, Stanford, Princeton, and Columbia. And for my acceptance ratio, I got into Cal Poly Slow, I got into UCSD, I got into UCLA with Region Scholarship. Uh, I got rejected from Cal, I got waitlisted from UCI, I got waitlisted from Columbia, and then, then I got into Stanford and Princeton. Uh, so I don't know, take that as you will. I was very happy with uh, my results during my application process, I don't know. Okay, so for my stats. Uh, in high school, I graduated with a 4.5 uh, weighted GPA. Uh, it was 4.0 unweighted, and I was in the top 1.5% of my class. I think it was about, it was out of about 100 and 617 students in my class, I don't know. Yeah, 617, something like that. Um, for the SAT, I took it once. And I received a 1500, I got a 780 for my math score, and then I got a 720 for my evidence-based reading and writing. And then for my SAT subject two, I didn't plan on taking this. I remember it was November and my friend was like, wait, Darren, you're applying to schools and you're in STEM and you haven't taken an SAT subject two test. And I was like, no, my schools don't require it. I don't want to take it. And then they were like, you're gonna get into no school. So then I panicked, I paid the late fee, took the test in like two weeks was not prepared, um, and then I got a 740, which I guess wasn't it wasn't that bad, but I didn't want to submit it to the private schools. I did submit it to the UC system. Um, I don't know, take that as you will, but I got a 740 on the math two subject test. In high school, I was pretty involved. I was in uh, three, three service clubs. I was in Interact Club. I was the vice president for two years. I was in Key Club, and I was also in American Red Cross. Uh, I played two sports all four years. I ran cross country. Uh, I was a captain my senior year, and then I ran track and field. I was a captain my junior and senior year. I mostly ran the hurdles, but I also ran some other sprints. I was definitely better in track and field, and I went pretty far in that in that sport. I think I got to the last meet for state for California. So that was pretty big for me. I wasn't a natural hurdler at all. I did took APs, but I also took um, college classes my senior year. I took multivariable calculus and linear algebra. And I also took a college English class. I think it's called English 101 and a communications class. Okay, so um, for advice that I have for the application, it's very quick little tips, it's not that much. For the first tip, start now. Do not procrastinate on your application. Give yourself as much time as you can. It'll save you a long, it'll save you in the long run. During the school year, you'll probably get very busy. It's gonna be different this year because I, I think people are or doing uh, their high school from their home because of COVID, so I don't really know, but either way, just give yourself as much time as you can. Uh, depending on how many schools you're applying to, it just really saves a lot of stress and effort um, later on, so please apply, start now. I think the applications come out August 1st. Second, research, research, research your schools. You need to research your schools. Um, it'll come in handy if they ask questions like, why us, why do you want to come? to our school, um, stuff like that. Uh, so I really do recommend researching your schools. It'll help you get to know more about where you're applying, why you wanna go to a certain school. Maybe you'll find certain programs that you'd like at other schools that you never really thought about, very like niche programs. 
um, I really do recommend researching your schools and maybe you'll drop your dream school, who knows? Maybe it's not for you, maybe it was just the name. And third, I would say, have people that you trust read and edit your application. Uh, this mostly goes for the essay portion, just because they can always find little grammar mistakes and they can also reinforce if the person that you're presenting to the reader is coming across the way you want it to come across, because that is very important. Um, and you never really know until you have somebody else read your essay because you're gonna have an admissions officer read your essay and you might be presenting it one way in your head, but then it comes across a different way. But with that tip, I just remember to keep your own voice. You can always say no to certain editing um, tips and stuff like that. I did that a couple times because I didn't want to lose my voice in my um, essay. So just keep in mind, stay confident in yourself when you're uh, having other people edit your essay. Uh, fourth, uh, when, you, when you apply, it may slightly impact your chances. I don't know much about this because I applied to all my schools regular decision. Um, mostly because I didn't really know much about the early action or early decision process. My school wasn't very good at promoting that uh, in a way, so a lot of people just apply regular decision. But I've heard that like if you apply early decision or early action, you have a better chance of getting into schools. I don't know about that uh, that much, but I have heard that, so just keep that in mind. Maybe you can look into that. And also, if you apply early action, you have to submit your applications earlier. So again, back to tip one, do not procrastinate. It'll save you a lot in the future. And my last tip is just to stay confident and hopeful. It's a very interesting time. I know this probably isn't what you expected during your college application process, but you'll get through this. It's definitely a lot, but uh, at the end of the road, you'll find the school that's right for you. And yeah, it'll be the start of your next life. The fact that you're already considering going to college is an achievement in itself. It might may not seem like that to some people, but it really is. Also, just be proud of yourself that you're taking this step to further uh, your future. Uh, in this manner if you want to go to college. And that's all I have for today. Let me know if you want to see other content. I plan on releasing videos about, I don't know, my experience at Stanford, uh, vlogs, when and if I go back to campus in the fall, uh, my essays, certain application tips, etc. Interview tips for colleges I never interviewed before. So anyways, uh, yep, just, I don't know, like the video, comment below if you want to see stuff, subscribe if you want. Keep learning with Darren. I don't know, maybe I'll change the slogan. That's kind of stupid. Anyways, bye.